What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another week of Course Guides. This week, though, we are going to be starting with the promotion event that is going on this week at the Flamingo for the TGC Tours, with tomorrow being the Challenge Circuit Course Guide, so be on the lookout for that. But for today, we have the promotion event number four here at the Flamingo, and if you haven't played the Flamingo... You are in for a nice treat, as this course is a banger of a course made by Mayday and also Victory Lane Sports. A little long on some holes that could run into some problems for a lot of people, some water in play that could also run into some problems for people, but a course that you can score on just as long as you can keep her in the fairway. Looking over what conditions you'll have for this round number one at the Flamingo, you have default wind speed, we'll see what that means. Wind direction to the east, fairways are normal, greens are normal, so both default. Green speed is very fast though, which plays a big part on the greens and could definitely lead to some inflated scores. Time of the day is morning and the weather is clear. So let's head out and get this course guide rolling. Before I hit this begin round though, if this is a video that you end up doing enjoying, please make sure to leave a like on the video or think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. PGA Tour content and will be the show content coming this week. Super excited. And just the overall sports content flowing. Well, let's head out to the course. Get this thing rolling. Here we go. All red attire. <laughs> All right, so start her off. This is a hole that you're going to want to drive, but you don't have to. You can actually, you can take a three wood in and it'd be fine. What I've been doing is I've been doing a little partial drive uh, and just kind of getting this up there as far as possible, but trying to keep it short of the sand trap because, well, we don't want to go in the sand. So just keep it short in line right down the fairway. Hitting fairways is very important uh, on this course. Staying out of bunkers, because some of these holes get pretty long for you. Here in uh, number one, though, you have a big green to work with, so hitting it short isn't really that much of an issue. So low wind looks like our default for today. Let's see if we can get this up here nice and close. Slowed it. She's going to end up short. And what I meant by very fast greens could lead to some inflated scores. There's some really, uh, there's some really tough perch holes on this course. So if you don't hit your mark, you could end up, you know, rolling it into a position that's going to be not too good for you when you put it home. All right, let's see if uh, this will do it here. You gotta go 27, so 80. Can we get this at least close to the cup? Get our distancing down here. All right, that feels good. Yep. Not enough juice. Not enough juice. That was a pretty good line, too. Oh, that's a bummer. That was actually a really good line. Ah, that's alright. What can you do? We'll take a par. Also, I don't know what the scores are going to be to move up. I also don't know how many spots are available, either. Um, for each tour. I don't even know if there's going to be any available on PGA, maybe one or two, just to give some of the elite people to play for. Platinum, not PGA, Platinum. I'm curious, we'll have to see what happens. Alright, with this wind straight into our face, normally if the wind is like a crosswind, which you might get in some of these rounds, landing it right in here is actually really good. You'll hit, you'll bounce up, and this actually kind of slopes slightly downhill and comes back into the cup with the wind in our face though we're gonna play this up into the wind a little bit and uh, we're gonna go right at it and see if 
See if we can get that to kind of land in the same location that we're, we would be aiming for. Ugh, fast the heck out of it. Wow, I fasted that really bad. All right, over here's not too bad. Playing up to this hill isn't that bad. We're gonna try to stop this a little short. We don't wanna go past the hole because we don't wanna be hitting downhill. That was not enough. <laughs> oh God, okay. Well. Not a par that we want to be playing around with. Broke too much. Yep, broke too much to the left. All right. Well, we got to get that one back. Bogey is not ideal. Honestly, just play this anywhere in the fairway. It plays anywhere from the fairway. The further right you get, the better. Just because it gives you more green to come into this round one pin. But we are off the fairway. So these are the things that you don't want to do. You don't want to be off the fairway because off the fairway makes this course so much longer. Uh, we probably could have went for it here, but now because we're off the fairway, we are not going to be able to go for it. On the fairway, you can take a driver up here, sometimes a three wood up, and uh, get yourself an eagle opportunity. But now, we gotta try to bear this close to get a birdie. This is what I mean by plateauing, like look at this hole. You have to make a pretty spot on uh, shot here to get this thing to stick properly. Let's see if that's the right distance into this wind. It is. All right. We have ourselves an opportunity here. Okay, we got it right back. Good. We got it right back. As we move on to a nice little par three. Uh, as you can see from this entire par three, it all slopes back to the hole. So just as long as you don't go long, don't go long. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. Don't go long. We're gonna try to play this, do a little uh, overpower of this four iron. Uh, I don't really feel like partialing a three iron into this just because I'm worried that I'll overhit it. Because if anything, you want to be short. If you're short, you actually have a chance to recover for par. If you're long, that chance becomes very slim. Because going long, you have to hit down a red slope, into an orange slope, into a yellow slope, all the way off the green. So, I might actually just play this straight up into this wind. Or fast it. Boy, tell you what, I've been I've been really playing army golf lately. I just can't get my tempo down. We're gonna see if we can recover out of here though and get ourselves a nice little par. Good. We'll take our par. Not very ideal though. Through four, you definitely want to try to be like two under at least. Because these first four holes aren't the hardest. All right, this is a hole that you don't want to go in the bunker. You want to keep this left. Uh, honestly, even just shorting it out and just keeping it into the fairway is good. Going into the bunker, coming into this green. Uh, this green is a little slow pappy and uh, you have to kind of do a little bit of a fade in. Uh, if you want it to actually get close. So I suggest just keep it in the fairway or if anything, keep it left side rough. 
Uh, the bunker is not a place that you want to be for this hole. And you'll see it when it comes up. Um, what I mean by a little bit of slow pappy. It's it's protected. Is is what I'm I'm trying. To, the the pin is just protected. Right here. So if you're coming from the bunker, this is what you'd be coming into. All sloping out away, sloping out short. Like because if you're coming out of the bunker, you might hit it short. You might have a putt from down here, which you definitely don't want. Uh, if you hit it over to the right, you're gonna have nothing but a downhill sloping away from the pin um, shot in for your chip or your splash. It's just it's not a it's not a really good location for you to recover from. So just try to avoid that bunker at all costs. There's a perfect. My line's a little off, but that is beautiful. That's the type of shot that we want right there. For sure. As we move to a one under. All right. Welcome to blow up hole number one. <laughs> Honestly, what I've been doing for this hole, taking what the course gives me, I'm just gonna. I just want to try to get it on the green. Honestly, I don't. I don't want to take even the slightest of chance of putting it into the water. If that means for you hitting it middle of the green and just taking a. Uh, Taking a a, a a two putt for a par, so be it. I, I don't really have like a, there isn't like a, you know, do this. It's just, you have to hit a good shot on this hole. Cause if you don't, like this green just doesn't work with you. Any of the pins, any of the pins gets punished. So you just kind of have to take what your shots giving you at the time. Because if you get too if you get too saucy, you're gonna be in the water. And I would rather take a two putt for a par or even a three putt for a bogey instead of taking it into the water. Because that could lead to double, triple bogeys, which we definitely don't want. All right, another par three where we want to be short. More plateauing. Don't miss your spot. I've been fasting this three iron a lot, though, so. There we go. Ended up still going a little long. Hopefully the hill brings us back a little bit. It did not. All right, all downhill here. Another one of those holes where you want to be short, but we didn't go too long, so we can at least still have a chance at this. Just a tad too hard down that hill. Oh, I blasted that. I should have took my time. I don't know why I didn't. That was my fault. That was my stupidity right there. 100%. We should be doing a lot better than what we are now. All right, blow up hole number two. Big potential. You just got to keep it in the fairway. There's not a whole lot of course management to do with this one. You just got to hit a good shot. Which we did not. Well, hit a good shot, just not the shot we were looking for. 
But good thing about this is we can recover, which we're gonna try to do here. I'm gonna get greedy because we need to. 82 actually might be all right for a lie here. I'm gonna pop it up a little bit, get a better lie. Get up to an 83. We'll take an 83, 86. I'm gonna try to pop this up a little bit. We're gonna try to get it up over. If we can get this onto the green, we have a chance, a chance at a birdie. We just wanna get this as close as possible so that we can at least save the par. Good thing about hitting it in the water here, it, it does usually give you a drop like this, depending on where you hit it into the water, but. Big kick, lucky kick. Oh, we got the big kick. All right, that actually is really good. We have a chance, uh, a good chance at a par now, which is what we were looking to do. That'll work. Give us the par, please. Okay, we at least saved it. But, uh, the, I, uh, we saved it, yes, great. But this is a hole where you can actually have a really good chance at an eagle. So, getting a par on here is actually kind of a loss for us. Okay. How greedy do you want to get? If we play this at a 215, we still have a pitch coming in. If you don't want to do a pitch, you want to do a wedge, you can do that. You just got to hit like a six, five, four iron in, uh, and you'll have a wedge shot. I mean, you can bring a three wood up here if you want a closer pitch shot, or even potentially maybe even a flop shot. Or you can do what we're about to do and go for it. You have to hit a pretty good shot in here. Uh, you, if you're using the big dog, you have to short swing it. You have to fade it in, uh, and you have to ride this this wave right here. You need it to land and kind of ride this this wave all the way in. It is a very, very, very difficult part four to go for, but we're gonna try. We're gonna see what happens. What's the worst gonna happen? We go in the water. Honestly, if you're playing a good round up to this point, I would not suggest doing this. If you're kind of behind and don't want to push the boundaries of the course a little bit, then I would say do this. Not enough. Too fast. But we're still up here to potentially uh, get it at least somewhat close. We're not going to get it too close because, I mean, look at, look at this. Look at this green, you know. This is this is the risk. We're probably not going to get this close for a birdie. You know, we we tried to go for the eagle or at least get it close enough to maybe potentially go for an eagle. But uh that's the risk you run. Like I said, I highly suggest you just take the wedge shot in. You have a much better chance at getting a birdie than what I do right now. Let's see, 318. I'm gonna put a little extra mustard on it. Perfect. All right. We still got our birdie. Thank God for that. Especially on a bad shot where I fasted my flop shot when I didn't want to. Because I wanted that to be uphill putt. You want that like pin high, not past the hole or even before the hole. Because then you have to work with that dangerous slope. All right. One of the rare holes where you can just go for it. And, and if you go in the bunker or rough or anything, doesn't really matter. You can recover from it. She'll get to see here as we play this from the bunker. 
But again, like I said, one of the rare holes where you can actually go for it. You have a lot of protection on this on this hole. A lot of protection. Boy, I don't know if this gets up though. Kind of in between clubs here. Got up just enough. Give us at least a shot at it. See if we can make it. Just didn't break at our feet. As we take home another par. Fortunate. Unfortunate. We are a ways behind the top dogs. Ways behind. Okay, this this fun one. So with the tees where we're at today, this is how far we're gonna get. There's additional tees that make it that if you fade it in, you make it pretty much at, here, I can do it better here. So there are tees where if you hit it, a driver, this is where you're gonna land. For those, what I suggest is do a little fade in and try to land it somewhere on the left side of the fairway. If you do end up in the rough, completely fine. You can actually still recover from it. It's a little bit more difficult, but you can still recover from it. So I say just go for it. Uh, for these pins that we have, we're kind of barely even floating out uh, into the fairway here. So we're just going to grip and rip and, and uh, take what we get. We'll we bring in probably a th either, either an overpowered three iron or a three wood in. We're gonna do a three wood. I'm gonna heavy, heavy draw this because I want to draw it into this hill and try to skirt it up, up here. So I'm gonna heavy draw it. If we end up off the green, that's fine. We can still recover from it and get ourselves a nice little birdie opportunity. I'm gonna put a little bit of extra mustard on it. Ah, oh, too much. Boy, that actually came out. That came out super clean right there. I thought with that fade in, or, or that draw in, uh, that draw would have uh, taken a bit off, but it did not. That actually stayed pretty, pretty cool and calm right there. Sit. Perfect. We got a nice little uphill putt here for our. Hopefully, birdie. Which we got. One of the easier par fives to get a birdie on. Like I said, even if you go into the rough, you can usually still get it up there close enough to, to get yourself a nice little birdie putt. Okay. Again, a lot of protection. I'm actually going to play this a touch long and try to get it to roll back for us. That is the goal that we're going to do here. Oh, we fasted it. That might be a little too long. Oh, come back. Come back. Oh, it did. Oh, it did. Oh, it did. Nice. Okay, that actually worked out. That's what I suggest to do with the wind at our back. Play it a little long, try to get it to roll back. I mean, if your clubs is the way it is, you can play it a little short, then play it a little short. We are just going to avoid that center bunker. That's all we're doing here. So I'm gonna play a little uh, partial drive. I just wanna keep it short enough to avoid that bunker. Perfect. 
Now we got this to work with. Man, I slowed it. Bummer. It's gonna give us a putt, isn't it? It sure is. All right, not ideal. Ideally, you wanna just keep it right in between that little valley right there. You can even play the slope to the left with the pin. Uh, we just slowed it. It's unfortunate. Hmm. See how close we can get. We just need to get our par here. I pulled it. And I overpowered it. Oh man. Both of those probably led to us missing that putt. That would have been really close. Dang. Oh, I want to hit one of these big ones. I want to hit one of these big ones so bad. Ha. It's alright. Not playing the best uh, round of golf right now. All right, big boy, if you got it, even if you don't have it, you know what to do. Rip and rip. Rip it and rip it. I will tell you, playing it, if you have the wind at your back for one of these, playing it from that that first set of fairway, you're bringing a three wood into this. Like it is, This is a very long hole that does not work in your favor with the wind at your back. Another really... Tough perched green that we have to work with here. You just gotta hit a, a dead nut shot. All there is to it. Gotta hit the good shot. That slight fast should still be okay. Just as long as we can keep it on the second perch. Oh, we do. This is gonna be a tough putt. It's gonna be downhill, but it should hold as long as we don't. Like, blast it. It's unfortunate on that slight fast. That kind of drifted us a little bit too far left. Okay. Just don't hit it too hard. <sighs> Close. Close. It had a chance. Not that great of a round we got going right now. Alright. You know what to do whenever you see one like this. El Grippo, El Rippo. I think that actually means the nothing, the nothing. It's not even, it's not even another Lego. It's just, it's just stupid. <laughs> that was so stupid. Just grip and rip it. Don't El Grippo, El Rippo. Literally means nothing. <laughs> God. All right. Going into the wind to touch with this pitch shot, but we just want to get this on the green. We'll use that slope to our advantage. Preferably don't fast it or slow it. Ah, oh, man. Don't play like I play right now, okay? That's how you, that's how you score good. Just don't do what I do. Take what I say to heart, but don't play like I play. 
Cause, uh... Boy, this has been a hard knock life. I hate army golfing. Fast to a slow, to a slow, to a fast, to a perfect when you don't want it. I mean, it's just, I'm all over the place. All over the place. Okay, wind's actually kind of in our favor right here. Because where you want to aim for this one is like right here. This is where you want to aim. Secondary option is to pop it up, put heavy spin on it, and land it here and try to get it to stop. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to aim for like this quadrant right here. It's going to give us a big kick, uh, but it shouldn't be big enough to lead to problems for us. I'm gonna add a little bit of spin on it, just because we don't want it to catapult too much. I'm gonna do a touch of D-loft, because the wind is ever so slightly pointing back at us. Touch long. I wind didn't do as much as I wanted to. I'll still work out. We at least have a chance at it. I'm gonna play this back some, because we're going down an orange slope here. So we're just gonna touch this down this hill. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, that's a bummer. Man, we're on a par streak right now on a set of holes that you don't want to have a par streak on. Damn. Okay, all right. What to say about this hole? So, two things you can do, three things you can do here. Um, You can straight up Rock a partial perfect, take it right straight through the trees, be completely fine. You can play this back, take a wedge in, or pitch in, be completely fine. Uh, or you can just give up uh, and shoot the ball straight into the water and just take the drop that you get. <laughs> I suggest you don't do that. Uh, on some of these, on, on, on one of these pins, the blue pins, uh, you can actually get through here a lot easier. Uh, it goes super long and you have to play it back even more. I don't suggest, especially if you're playing for a fast, I do not suggest you go for this. You have to hit such a perfect shot through here, playing a fade and a fast. Uh, most of the time, you're going to hit these trees over on the right because it, it has to be the perfect shot. So I do not suggest if you play a fast like I do, do not... Do not, I, you can, you have to hit a really good shot to get through there, but I highly suggest that you don't. We're just going to play this up into the fairway. We got a decent enough round going. You know, if you're feeling saucy and maybe, you know, it's kind of become a little bit of a throwaway, you can go for it, but yeah, I just don't suggest that you do. Now, for this approach shot, I'm actually going to play this right. Just to avoid water. Uh, if I fast it, it's still going to come in nicely. If I hit a perfect, it's still going to get up onto the slope and roll down towards the hole. So, I want to avoid... I want to avoid going into the water. So, I'm going to play to avoid the water. We had a touch of fast. Perfectly fine. Still works with the slope. We avoid the water. We're good to go. Have a chance for a birdie. Dang. That sucks. Had a chance at a birdie. Just didn't, didn't drop. The putts don't drop. Round doesn't go well.
All right, last hole to go for, ending on a par five. Uh, if you play this back, you got a long ways to go still. So it's up to you how you want to play it. I'm going to play for lofting this up, doing a slight draw, and bringing it around and trying to land onto this fairway and getting a big enough bounce as we possibly can so that we can really, really, really go for this hole. So that is what I'm going to try to do. It's completely up to you, though. And it's not going to go our way, so time to lay up. If you do get a good shot in, you can actually go for this. Like, I can almost go for this. You know, if I didn't wasn't in the heavy rough. So, I would suggest at least trying. Playing it back isn't going to get you anything. Uh, you're just going to be doing exactly what I'm doing now or laying up into the second part of the fairway. So, I suggest just go for it. I think 9 out of 10 doctors recommend it too. And sit, please. Okay. Here we go. Another shot at a birdie. Let's see if we can maybe end it out on a birdie here. Please and thank you. We can. All right. We ended out on a birdie and ended out on a five under. Definitely. Definitely, definitely not our best round. I usually average kind of right in the line of, you know, eight to 10 under. Five under though, like if you're down in the lower CCs, five under, if you do that consistently, that's definitely gonna get you moving up on this course. This course is tough, man. It really is. It, it, it lends to a lot of trouble, especially with the conditions that you get. It could really, it can really hurt you in the long run. So this week you have all the different tees. You have red, you have green, you have white, you have blue. So you're going to get thrown a lot of tees in all four rounds, which means that the course is going to change up slightly. You're going to have different landing zones for a lot of the holes. The big one is going to be that par five that's kind of like over the buildings and around the trees. That's the big one that you're going to have to play with. But like I said before, you know, if you get a short tee, just you can knock it into the rough, but at least go for the fairway, I would say, personally. Get yourself a nice little short shot coming in to get yourself an eagle there. But avoid the blow-ups, play it safe, make some putts, and you'll be all right this week. That is all she wrote for the course guide and the flamingo. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you for your rounds for the promotion event. Good luck. We'll be back tomorrow with the Challenge Circuit Course Guide, which is at one of my favorites, Orion Ranch. But until then, I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will catch you on the next one.